Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Peugeot 3008. Then I'll take you for a ride in it. But first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 1.6 blue HDI Allure. It's done 20,699 miles. It's Euro 6 engine, 1560cc, 2017 on a 67 plate. Fuel consumption, urban, 60 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 72.4 miles per gallon. And combined is 67.3 miles per gallon. Has a top speed of 115 miles per hour out of a four cylinder, 118 brake horsepower, 16 valve engine. I've used this car for a few days now, and honestly, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's one of the best cars I've driven for, for, for ages. And I know you'll be thinking, that's not a Range Rover. Who are you and what have you done with Baz? Or somebody's got a gun to his head, let's call the police. Honestly, it's so economical. It's great to drive. It's well set out inside. Really, really well set out inside. Very, very comfortable. Um, soaks the bumps up and so economical. I, I just couldn't believe it. I put, I put 20 quids worth of fuel in it and I must have been running around in it for, a, for about a week. Uh, and as normally I use a Range Rover and that would probably last me two days if, if, you know, if that and I only live five miles away. But what a fantastic car. If this was a, a BMW, an Audi uh, or a Mercedes, they'd sell millions. So, power folding door mirrors, got the rear privacy glass, the side protective mouldings. So this car's got 360 cameras as well. I'll, I'll, I've taken all the photographs in the video and I, and I must admit, I forgot to do that. But it's got so many gadgets on it as well. Some of them good, some of them are there if you need them. Multi-spoke diamond cut and black alloy wheels with a Michelin Primacy tires on. So we've got front parking sensors, big Peugeot Chrome grille, which, which is a little bit like a Mercedes with this kind of dual design. Uh, but I, I, I do like the front on it. The, the grille's not taking over the whole car. It's big, but not too big. Um, nice low front. As I say, we've got parking sensors. It has got 360 cameras but I can't for the life of me see where the, the cameras are at the, at the front. Um, but anyway, so I, I like the design at the front. I think it's really nice. I, I like the color combination too. We've got the wheel arch protectors, the plastic wheel arch protectors, uh, and this chrome strip, which carries on up and over the, the windows. We've got the roof bar carrier system. I do genuinely really like it. Got the rear spoiler, the rear lights that remind me of a Mustang, which has to be a good thing. Um, just catches just under there. Reversing camera there, I do know where that is. Nice flat load area. It's got a heavy duty matting, so the, the carpet in the, the boot is, is light new. Reversing sensors too, as I say, you've got a reversing camera and the 360 cameras. It, it's almost, when you put it in reverse, it's almost like there's a drone hovering above showing you where the car is. Um, it, it's, it's a parking aid, not being able to see out at junctions. So I, I prefer that, but anyway. So at each side, you've got a handle. You pull that handle, back seat flips down. I'll, I'll show you that from inside uh, in a second. And then instead of exhaust ports like on most cars, this has kind of vents. <laughs> and again, you can't really see them, but they look really good. It makes a refreshing change to get into a car without banging my head on the door here. But these bags of headroom here, plenty of room in the back seats. Really, really comfortable, nice design, nice and practical. Um, I don't think that will be real leather, but it's kind of a man-made leather. And then this 
tough wearing cloth in the center um, contrast stitching very very well padded and these front seats again that design it I'll show you from the front but holds your shoulders and the, the seat is designed it, it's so the the back passenger's got all the leg room here and then it comes out and uh, it looks looks superb looks like it belongs in a I don't know a Lamborghini or something perhaps the headrest in the back are probably designed for children just got to knock them up a bit so they're not right in the middle of your back if you're an adult but then you've got this rear centre armrest two cup holders there the parcel nets there's a little sign there I thought it was going to say your life jackets under the seat uh, but it's, uh, it says top tether so no doubt something to do with a, a child seat in the front and you've got the Isofix rear child seat anchor points in the back here it's a lovely car so I'll just take you for a ride in it So proper key, um, let's just uh, get ready, quite, uh, it's quite warm this morning, dressed wrong, so here we go, here's the service history, 20th of 9, 2018 at 5,388 miles, JJ Cookson's. 24th of 9, 2019 at 10,268 miles, JJ Cookson. 17th of 9, 2020, 13,634 miles, JJ Cookson. 22nd of 4, 2021, 14,538 miles, JJ Cookson. 31st of 3rd, 2022, 18,367 miles, CMS Bolton. So great service history. Um, Right, where to start? So, first of all, let's just see, where's that? Uh, that's right away back there. So, <coughs> I really like the steering wheel. It's like a Formula One steering wheel, kind of an octagonal, uh, kind of an octagonal shape. Um, the paddles on the side, I, I like this, I, I like that bit there. That's, this bit is mine, passenger. <laughs> If, if you want to get in the glove compartment, that's yours, but leave everything else alone. This is mine. So that's that's the, the driver's section <laughs> separated. If I could have a glass panel here, that would be even better. Um, front centre armrest, and you've got storage, which goes right the way under here. So there's, there's plenty of storage in there. These seats, as I said before, you know, they, they're like, they've, they've got shoulder pads for you as well. They're, they're built up at the side really really comfortable i like i like the gear stick there you go that's uh, reverse and then as you can see there if i just uh again this chap's part directly behind me just where i'll reverse into him So there you go, as I say, it looks like there's a, a drone hovering above you. Um, and, and just, just so, you, so you know, hang on a second, uh, just cut my little demonstration up there. If I go there and then put it in reverse. You can, you can, see, where you, you can see where you're going and what you're not going to bump into. It kind of remembers the ground. It's uh, as you're reversing. It, it's it's quite funny. So you go forward, and you've gone over that. Uh, you've gone over where it remembered. But anyway, the display. I like the display. Uh, it's certainly set on this one. I just remember to switch my glasses on. So. The display set on this has 
everything I, I want. It's, it's kind of like a fighter pilot's display. Um, Speedo on the left there, digital. It's uh, <coughs> far left is your fuel gauge. It's showing you you've got your blind spot warning lights on or warning alert on. In the centre, you've got your sat nav display. As you can see there, I'll just lean forward and you've uh, got the same display there, but you, you don't have to take your eyes off the, the road in front, it's right ahead of you. This design too, with the instrument binnacle above the steering wheel, that's fantastic. Everybody can see that, or everybody should be able to see it. And it's certainly ideal for me. My Everything's out of the way, and, and you know, you can, doesn't matter what lock you've got on, you can still see what, what's happening. Over on the right-hand side is your, your rev counter. Now, if I click this, and move it forward, there you go, you've got driving, dials, so switch it to dials, click on that, that changes to your dials. And there you, you've got your traditional speedo rev counter on the right hand side. Coolant temperature and fuel on the left. And then you, you know, your display in the middle for cruise control. Uh, you've got cruise control here, um, also speed limiter. It has lane departure warning and also, well, I, I forget how they word it, but if I click there, these buttons allow you to see certain things on the screen. So if I go on there, sorry, if I go on the car one, I click on the car one, there you, you've got stop start. So we, we want that off, stop start off, help with changing lanes. That's it, the lane departure warning. Really, if you need that, you shouldn't be on the road. If you, if you change lanes without indicating, it tries to pull you back into the, the lane you're leaving. Um, if, you, if you go across the, the chevrons on the left-hand side or too far to the left, a big warning alert comes on and, and says, you know, wake up, you idiot. Um, blind spot alerts, great, love them. So you, you can control everything. It, why, you know, why you'd want to switch your parking sensors off? I, I don't know. Automatic headlamp dipping, fair enough. Um, blind spot sensors, traction control, under inflation initialization. So that's driving features, and then you've got vehicle settings. And there you go. Settings, vehicle access, comfort. So we'll just click on comfort. Give the road rear wiper, switches on when you select reverse. Somebody's caught the wall there. Mirror adjustment in reverse, or adaptation in reverse. Mood lighting, hey, mood lighting, you know, yeah, well, that's my favorite ever. Mood lighting on. We've got, ah, most important thing, to me these days anyway, I, I think it's uh, fantastic. Apple CarPlay. Just get up here a bit further where people can see me now. I'll just plug it in. Uh, actually, while, while we're going, just paddle shift. So I can change down on the left there. And it's, it's a real nippy car. You can also click into manual. You can also click into manual. Press there and then you can only use the paddles like so. You'll see it changing down there. It tells you what gear you're in in the center. Very good suspension. 
change it up like so, we'll get it out of manual. But then, that, that's in drive. If I click sport, just watch the rev counter. There you go, shoots up, makes the throttle more responsive. And then you can uh, give it some gas. Um, I need to pull over because I have to touch my phone. You can do all this, you can mess about with all this and oh, over here also at the end of your at the end of the stalk, if you click that, you'll see there it's changing and you can change your display there of your trip computer. I'm just gonna pull over here. Oh, hopefully he's not gonna turn over here, but we'll give him some room. Oh you're welcome! No, don't no, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, and there you go. Right, anyway. So, all right. So, I'll, so I'll pick the phone up. There's the lead, the USB lead. Right, make sure. Oops. So, that's it. I'll put that down because no doubt I'll have to with these laws these days. But, Apple CarPlay. So, it's now mirroring my phone. And apparently... Although you can't touch your phone, you can use that. Um, in all fairness, when you've got an internet connection, you don't have to mess about with that. You can just tell Siri what to do. Uh, but as you can see there, this car has sat-nav anyway. Uh, sat-nav, it's got Bluetooth hands-free, Bluetooth audio streaming, but Apple CarPlay, in my opinion, is so much better. I said it time and time again, manufacturers need to do away with audio equipment, give you a decent set of speakers instead, and an interface. Just a screen, that's all you need. You don't need all the gubbins inside that goes wrong. We, we've just got an Audi and the multimedia player's uh, system has, has gone. And it, it's a lot of money to, to replace. Um, you just need an interface. That's Apple CarPlay. And you can do anything. The audio books. Sorry. My fingers don't work properly. So audio books. You go back there. Messages, WhatsApp, Zoom, um, Spotify. your phone, music, like so. Oh, Steely Dan, I'll just show you the, the speakers. No Great speakers. Um, and, and, but as, as I said, the most important thing is that you can control all that by voice. I don't think we have any, we, we, there's never a connection up here but um, for argument's sake, you can send a text. It will read your text to you. When you get a text, it will read it to you. Um, the amount of times I see people in, in traffic jams and even on the motorway, driving up the motorway, they're in the fast lane and, and you can tell they're looking down and, and doing something on the phone. Um, you, none of that with Apple CarPlay, you, you just tell it what you want. So here we go anyway. Cruise control is down there, and speed limiter. You've got a volume control here. That's the switch that you control your dashboard with. Just turn that, and as you can see, you can change it, you can personalize it. The, the driving one, there you go, that shows the car. I like the, I like navigation. I like the navigation one. There you go, that's showing you the road ahead. I mean, it, it is quite, it's quite accurate. Let's just say, would we be able, where would I turn here? Yeah, I mean, if I, if I was in fog, no, no, it's right. <laughs> if it was a real P, P Super, I, I would almost be able to, yes I would, I would, I'd be able to drive with that, 
just looking at that display. So I wouldn't be confident doing it. And of course it wouldn't tell you who's coming the other way, who hasn't got that and, and, and sensors. But what it really, really is a great car. It's so comfortable. It seems to make its own fuel. The, the nice high up dash, it's well away from you. You feel like you've got plenty of room. As I say, this, this steering wheel here, that's, that, that would uh, grace a Formula One car. That's lovely. It just, it, it's not too, it looks too small, but it's not, it's, it's fine. Everything about the car, this aluminium finish. Um, I, I, I like the fact that it's got this material that uh, kind of matches the seats. It's, it's just, every, you know, everything, everything about it. I noticed that um, the door card there, if you look round for the bonnet release, you can't see it. When you open the door, the door card covers it. It's, it's tucked away there. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps that's a, a safety feature to, to stop one of your kids pulling the, the bonnet release when you're driving along the motorway, I don't know or hooking the toe under it by accident. Um, it's, it's such a very, very good design. I, uh, you know, in the old days, oh no, that's not, not, not an old days story again, please. <laughs> I've had enough of them. In the old days, I worked for Peugeot and, uh, I, I was, I'd, for some reason, every January the 7th, I used to get fed up and just quit my job. I, I don't know, it must be New Year blues or something when I was younger, I just used to quit my job. And um, I was looking to water trader and, and there was a, a job advertised and, and the, the job said, are you in a rut or a grave? <laughs> the only difference is how deep it is. and. Uh, Anyway, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, an advert for a salesman for, a, well, a, a Talbot garage, Peugeot Talbot garage. And I, I, I rang up, I didn't send a, a CV and I rang up and asked to speak to the general manager. And the, the general manager, when, in the old days, when you wanted to be a, get a job as a salesman, what you had to do is send your CV in, but not wait for them to contact you. It's probably the same now. You've got to ring them. And, and then they think, oh, well, if he's ringing me, he'll, he'll be ringing his customers. Uh, little, little do they know. But anyway, and this, this chap, the general manager spoke to me and he, he said to me, uh, what, are you, what are you doing now? So I said, well, you know, nothing. He says, can you come for an interview? So I, I went and he seemed all right. He, he, he talked a good, seemed great. Uh, when I started working for him, it became apparent he wasn't great. He, he was an absolute swine. And uh, anyway, he used, he used to like his, his liquid lunches. And it was a massive showroom. It was a, a, an old, cold showroom. And we were freezing in, in, the, in the sales department. And there was two big pipes that ran around the back with like this spiral venting round and uh, those were the heating pipes and he, he wouldn't turn them on so when he went out for his liquid lunches when he as soon as he went out I used to go I used to go over and turn the heating on warm the place up and as I say there were big two massive pipes um, and then when he came back from his liquid lunch worse for wear I used to be able to see his car turning into the uh, into the <laughs> the car park so I'd run to the back of the showroom and turn these pipes off quickly and as soon as he came in he'd do the same thing he never learned as soon as he came in every day he'd uh, 
he think you can see it dawn on him it's it's warm in here <laughs> and then he'd go and try and turn these big valves off the big big wheels and he'd be there trying to turn them off and i'd already turned them off but anyway he never learned and i'm not sure he knew who did it but anyway it was me oh, i don't know i've got lots of stories about that place um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure any of them are good, but uh, salesmen in the old days, it just, I, I, I might actually, I'll do a vlog on, on, on some stories from there, um, I have got them on, I have got the stories on my blog, but I'll do a vlog, it was, a, it was funny times, great, absolute great learning curve but uh, oh a little foal and um, back to the switches you, you climate control if you click that there you go you can that's your fan switch low and high and where you want the um, heat or the uh, cold air to blow um, switch your sat nav on that's the sat nav of the car your music it's on Apple CarPlay there, so we'll knock it back to Apple CarPlay. It's, it's just such a fantastic car. Now, actually, it will just, uh, this might just warn me. That's... No, it didn't. It's, it's when somebody cuts in front of you, like an orange glow comes on the dashboard and it, uh, I think it beeps. But when when you when you see these, you know, there's a there's a thing going around. What if you'd been kidnapped? What message would you leave, or say in a video, so that your your relatives and people who knew you knew you were in trouble? And uh, up until a few days ago, mine would have been. I'm thinking about swapping over from my Range Rover to a Peugeot 3008. They'd be on the phone to the police straight away. But honestly, it's, it is really good. And I have to say that, you know, the, the fuel prices, um, you, you do have to think twice, but 60 odd miles to the gallon. And it's it's just a it's just a wonderful thing. On, on there, on the dash, it tells you the speed limits of the road you're on. It's just it's got everything I I would want. And uh, unfortunately. <laughs> The French aren't my favourite people. Um, I uh, I formed that opinion when I I used to drive to the south of France every year, and whenever you tried to get a drink, you'd go to the bar and, and order a drink, and and the, the barman would go, huh? Huh? and then some pretty girl had come up and and give her a drinks order, and then he, he could speak fluent English then. And I, and, and I realised then that the, the French people didn't really like the English very much, so I started going to Italy um, instead. So um, thanks for that, because I love Italy, and they're great. Anyway, this is... I, it's a really, really good car. And I, I think we'll be getting... Citroëns, Citroëns are the same. They've come on so much. Um, 
very, very underrated. But, but this is my ideal car, really. Um, so, I can thoroughly recommend it. Um, come and buy it. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.